Welcome to Get Your Mojo Back. We're diving into how to create a life that you love after divorce. I am your host, Alana Parkinson, and today I am joined by the brilliant Dr. Willow Brown. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Willow. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited. I love that you're putting together a summit for women who are rediscovering what life is like after after being in a marriage for a long time, some of them with kids. And, you know, I think as a as a woman, we really go into this uh, giving up of ourselves quite easily. It's kind of a neuro, you know, it's kind of in our brain chemistry. So mm-hmm. Um, there's no one at fault about it, but it's, it's, I think there's an uprising right now around, um, starting to reclaim your, your sovereign self yeah, or claim it for the first time for some of us. And that's, I think that's it too, right? A lot of us come into it, come into marriage, come into that whole idea of this is what life is supposed to be like, right? We're supposed to go to school, get our job, you know, find that person, get married, buy the house, have the kids, have the car, you know, all that stuff and not really tapped into what it is that we want, right? It's it's what our parents have, have designed for us or what our community has designed for us or whatever, but we're so disconnected. And then, so then when you do go through that period of divorce, it's like, well, if I'm not all of these things, then who am I? You know, exactly. and, and so this is it's really it's an amazing I mean, it's very difficult to get to that point. But once you're there, it's this amazing discovery of who you truly are, what's underneath all of that and what really lights you up, what makes you tick. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So can you just give us a bit of background, who you are, what it is yeah. that you do, where you're coming from today? Yeah, I'd love to. So um, I am a Chinese medicine doctor and a functional medicine expert who specializes in endocrinology and sexuality. Um, I have been working with women and women's health for over two decades. I've been a doula for a long time. You know, at certain times I was doing that for more intensively. Now I just kind of go to births and stick needles in people and usher babies along and, you know, and just really hold women as they go through each of those trans- transitions that we go through as women. I, I do a lot of work in the perimenopausal space right now, um, you know, because that's such a huge transition. And then women too who are are, yeah, going through divorce or breakups, you know, just big changes in life. And I think um, we're in this sort of post COVID time and um, a lot of people, not just women, but everyone is going through this, like, what, what am I doing? Where am I at? And that relationship isn't working for me. And this, you know, career path isn't working for me. And so I feel like there's a lot of confusion right now and you know i'm sitting in some of it myself and i i don't think that it's there's anything wrong with it i think we need it it's part of this like shaking of of what wasn't working like shaking it up so so that the you know the snow globe (laughs) can can settle in a in a new way that that works better for us the the trick is i think is keeping your um keeping your essence intact and for a lot of us we don't even know what our essence is and when we look at essence from a chinese medicine point of view it is sexual energy jing chi we call it j-i-n-g so jing chi and in the tantric tradition we call it shakti that's your sexual essence and so it's this vitality it's this drive it's this desire it's this it's this flame of life, you know, in Chinese medicine, it's like, okay, you're, you're, you've been conceived, like a flame is ignited, you know, and that flame flickers and goes on and on until the day that you die. And then that flame goes out. And so your Jing Qi is in Chinese medicine stored in the adrenal glands and the kidneys and the adrenals. And what are we looking at these days? Just a lot of adrenal burnout, adrenal fatigue. We hear these terms and what does it really mean? You know, you don't really know unless you get your cortisol levels tested. But what what I see a lot when I'm looking at these labs is, you know, um, cortisol levels should be high in the morning and should be low at night. That's how it should go. But a lot of times it's super low in the morning and people are dragging themselves around for half the day. And they're like, why am I so tired? And then at night they're wired. So if you are one of those people who's like, I need coffee to wake up and wine to wind down, 
then most likely if you were to test the cortisol levels in your body, you'd see that kind of pattern. Um, and so a lot of the work that I do is, is using your sexual energy, which everyone has. I hear that all the time. Like, I don't have a libido anymore. I don't really care about sexuality. I'm like, look, if you have breath and you have life in you and you have a heartbeat, then you have sexual energy. Okay. So let's find it. It might be between your two big toes. I don't know, but that's some, some of the places I've found it on people before it's somewhere in there, you know? And so we're going to find it. We're going to access it. We're going to bring it to life and we're going to use that tiny little flicker, that little flame that's like almost going out and we're going to reignite it and we're going to use what's there and draw it to your kidneys, draw it to your adrenals, teach you how to um, how to ovarian breathe, how to um, orgasmic upward draw, you know, how to bring this energy, use it as medicine, really. I'm about to publish my first book called Sex as Medicine because I truly believe that all the medicine that we have inside of us, we have inside of us. We just, most of us don't know how to use it, don't know how to access it. And then we're putting heavy, wet blankets of dampening shit on top of it, like sugar and caffeine and stress and depression and pharmaceuticals and the list goes on and on. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting because I went through, I went through a healing journey and went through that exact thing, like the adrenal burnout, all of that stuff and so much more and, and got to a point where my whole life was revolving around that. And that same idea, like the sexual energy was gone. Like there was nothing left in my marriage. I was a mom. I was this person recovering from this, this illness. I was this wife that really was super disconnected. There was no, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I was, you know, 35 and saying like, no one would ever want me. Like I'm, I'm done. You know, like I, I've, I've, that part of my life is done. Right. You know, I'm just going to focus on this part of my life. And, and when the marriage ended and it was like, just in that there was this rebirth, but then being with somebody else and, and going through the healing process and getting to that point where I was able to be in a relationship again. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you, it is there. It is there. Like there is sexual energy there that was, I don't think was ever lit really before. Right. Like, right. So you can step into this stuff. It doesn't matter how, how fizzled out you feel like you are when you, when your body is back in alignment, when you're in that healthy state and, and everything is flowing as it should be. Oh my gosh. And you're in an, and you don't even need to be in a relationship, but, but when you're in that relationship where you really feel that seen and heard and, and connected on that level with somebody else, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. So if you're in that space, I tell you this, don't, give up. Don't think that this is done for you. It doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you've been through menopause. It doesn't matter any of that. It's all there. And, and, you know, as, as Dr. Willow is saying, you just, you just need to find that, that, that little flicker, that little flame and, and bring it back to life. Yeah. And, you know, it's, there can be this sort of pressure around like, okay, I have to find it. I have to figure this out. I've got to climb out of this hole, you know, and, and that pressure can also be one of those dampening blankets that keeps you in the hole even longer. So I always recommend it's really just about self-nourishment. It's like you, it's about getting in a into a deeper relationship with your own inner beloved mm -hmm. essentially so every morning when you wake up it's like ask your inner beloved hey what do you want today you know what would nourish you today is it before you sit down to the computer is it you know going for a walk in nature is it um, eating a donut. I don't care what it is like nurture your inner beloved, but don't do, don't do the things that don't like, if you are going to eat a donut, enjoy the fuck out of it. Don't yeah, exactly. sit there guilty about it. You know, um, I don't advocate donuts, but you know, I'm just giving you examples. And so it's like, what nurtures your inner beloved for a lot of us, I think we get into these relationships before we even get to know our own inner beloved, we get into them in our early twenties and our sometimes our, you know, thirties, but, um, but we haven't had that chance to really get to know our truest essence. 
And then here we are later on in life, like you were pretty young, you know, in your mid thirties, a lot of women these days are in their mid forties or early fifties. And they're just really feeling, cause then they've got these hormonal shifts and changes that are happening as well. So not only is it like, whoa, my life looks totally different, but like, what the fuck is going on inside of my body, mm-hmm. you know? And so how to, and it can feel very overwhelming and it, it especially because hormones equal emotions, you know, when estrogen and progesterone levels start to plummet and testosterone as well. It's like, where did my mojo go? You know, where did my vitality go? Who am I? What is this body? And, um, and all of that can be used all of those questions. If you start to get curious, I think curiosity is probably one of the biggest components of rebuilding your life, rebuilding yourself, like getting curious about what your inner beloved wants. And, and as you said, you do not need another relationship. If one comes along, fantastic, that, you know, pulls you to the other side. Great. But it's actually better. I think when you can access this Shakti, this life force energy inside of yourself, um, on your own, because then essentially what you really truly want to get to is like, no matter what happens on the outside, no matter who comes or goes in my life, no matter what housing or career or people or beloveds or situations, children, I mean, we have no control over any of this stuff and it's constantly changing. We can be sure that whatever is really good is going to end someday and whatever's really bad is going to end someday. So we have to be able to, no matter what happens on the outside, come back home to our center, to our core, and get even more intimate with our inner beloved through the adversity or through the beauty, through both. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're living a very dualistic culture and world where it's like, this is good and that is bad. And I like this and I don't like this. And the duality causes suffering. Mm-hmm. but the the union the 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 thing that's above that which is really the witness you know just like i'm just watching this happen i'm watching myself go through a divorce i'm watching you know my life seemingly fall apart i'm just that and that's ego right the ego is like ah and you could get so emotionally sucked into that and just in a tailspin and take yourself down for the count i mean you you always have choice you always have agency so you can you can rise above and just watch it and be like oh it's not interesting that this, this is happening to me is it happening to me or is it happening for me maybe this is happening for me you know, and it's always good to look at your track record too. Like, have you had a pretty, you know, have things often worked out for you one way or the other? Um, then you can you can rest in that and trust in that. But but the Tao, you know, when we look at Taoist sexology, so I, I teach tantra, but I teach mostly primarily Taoist sexology. And um, let's just define that Taoist sexology. What the hell is that? So sexology is the um, study of or the observation of your own sexual energy. So we think of sexual energy as like, you know, having sex, you know, primary erogenous zones, like the penis, the the pussy, the nipples, you know, but there's so much more to it. And so there's so much more to your sexuality, discovering these secondary erogenous zones in your body, opening up the chakras, the meridians, the pathways, opening the brain chemistry to, to, have a greater capacity for for pleasure like you can have a a tantric moment with some roses (laughs) you don't need even (laughs) another person you know i have tantric moments with the ocean pretty much every day and so um so sexology is the study or the observation of that and you might be sitting there going like yep i have no libido it is dead so then you, you know, you you might think you don't have sexual energy, but it's also the other side of it is your endocrine system. So what's going on with your uh, cortisol levels? What's going on with your adrenal glands? What's going on with your ovaries? What stage are you at in life? How is your diet affecting your thyroid gland? How is your thymus working? You know, your, your immune gland. So we want to look at every gland, which connects to every chakra, 
And we really want to like bring this, I like to think of the the glands and the chakras as like this, this chain of elixir cups and one pours into the next and pours into the next and pours into the next. And so if one of them is out, the thyroid gland is out, then the other, you know, we're not getting a cascade of effects. Mm-hmm. And so um, sexology is those two things, right? What we think of as sexuality and then, which is a huge, you know, world and then endocrine. So, and then Taoism is, is we, most of us think of the Tao as the way. That's what I've heard. That's what I know it to be the way, but what does that really mean? What is the way anyway? And so the way is the way of nature. And so we can look to nature and we can see this expansion and contraction that happens constantly. Every breath you take, every day you move through, our every month we go through four seasons, especially as women, but men do too, or children, dogs, anyone with water in their body, go through a moon cycle. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of what how I teach Taoist sexology is according to those four phases of the moon cycle, because that's how you can get a lifeline in place and start recreating your life. Because every single month you're gonna go through a fall phase. Whether you're paying attention to the moon in the sky as a postmenopausal woman or a man, or you're paying attention to the moon in your womb, you know, you're going to go through a phase, a, a autumn phase or a fall phase where it's like, it's time to let go. What can you let go of? Do you want to let go of that sugar in your cupboard? Do you want to let go of those old panties in your panty drawer? Do you want to let go of that limiting belief? Like what is, are you letting go of this moon cycle? Mm-hmm. And so you do this deep clearing, which I think is the most important of all the phases. And then you move into this winter phase. And this winter is like, this is what people miss all the time is this winter, this pause, this stillness, because it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It is not valued and we're not taught to do it, but it's the yin time. And in the yin, which is the, the contraction to the expansion, right? In Chinese medicine and Taoism, the yin time, that's where that's where the essence is born from. So in that stillness, in just sitting with just being and recalibrating to who am I now? I just cleared all that stuff. I just let go of my marriage. I'm not in the home I've been in for the last 25 years. Like my kids are out of the house. Like, you know, just I was that now. Who am I? So you might sit in the winter period for a week of your monthly moon cycle, but you might be sitting in it for a couple of years also. So you want to look at these seasons, not only in the monthly lunar cycle, but also in your life. Mm -hmm. Like I am in a very big um, fall and winter phase right now myself, you know, and, and we, what is so challenging, feel free to interrupt me right now, anytime. I'm just, just, I'm super fascinated. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. What's so um, challenging about it? Well, it's not valued. And then we think we're not getting anywhere when we're sitting in the yin, when we're sitting in the winter, we think, you know, the ego starts to crawl back in and culture like, oh, you're this age and you don't have that. And you look at where you're at and you fucked up your life and, you know, all the inner critic voice, which is the opposite of your inner beloved. And um, and but we don't realize that that's actually the time your adrenals are replenishing. And so if you really take that winter phase and use it well and nourish, 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 then you are going to, when spring and summer come around, you're going to have the energy for it. Because what we do is we sit in this place and we stress out about it, right? We're not making progress. We're not becoming who we think we should be or whatever, who others think we should be. And we're missing our moment of replenishment. And then for sure, spring and winter are going to come. I mean, spring and summer are going to come. That next expansion is going to come. I mean, that's the thing that we can trust. That's the thing that we can rest in. Every expansion has a contraction. Every contraction has an expansion right behind it. And so it's going to come. And then all this flow is going to be coming at you. All this life. It's like, oh my God. And you're not going to have the resource for it. You're not going to have the reserve for it. So it's really important to pay attention to these lunar cycles and the season that you're in each month, but also in your greater life capacity. It's, it's so true. Like to watch that whole, that whole process, the the seasons come and go and all of that stuff. And, and to honor that, as you were saying, like, we don't, 
we're not taught to honor it. We're not taught to honor that inward focus. We're taught to achieve, do, you know, next thing, next thing, next thing. And, and we don't take that time to go inward. We don't take that time to really to rest and recharge. And I mean, I, I was, I still, I still struggle with it, but this year for the first time, I was like, I need to take care of me in this moment. I need to take care of me. And I'm, I'm still kind of in that space right now. I've, I have way less clients. I have way less, I'm, I'm doing this, this project, but for the most part, other than that, I've really pulled back and taken this time for myself, taken this time for my family. And it's been amazing. It's hard. It's really hard because you have that inner critic. That's like, you're not doing anything. You're yeah, not doing you anything. This is, producing. you should be building right yeah. now. Why are you not building? You have like, you know, and it's like, no, I need this time for myself. And it's true as you, I have more energy now than I did even a week ago, but yeah. I had to honor that space. And I think it's really important. And especially when you're going through these challenging transitions, right? We, it's like, oh, my, my whole world is falling apart, right? Like, I, I don't know what to do here. I must do. I must do what how can i rebuild and and the first part of that is is laying that foundation is getting really solid in who you are and taking care of yourself and then from there as you said right everything starts flowing everything starts flowing then things build really easily but if you're fighting against it then you don't have that energy and what you're building is like you can imagine like some rickety like walls are falling down the windows like kind of crooked you're like what did i just do right so when you take that time and create that foundation then then what you build is really truly aligned with you and, and it's stable and it's solid and it's gonna carry you through to that next period, right? Where you do that inner work and then can build again from that. So I love what you say. Yeah, yeah, I, it's, it helps to give language to it, you know, for, for, for ourselves, but then also when, when people are like, how are you? <laughs> you know, if you can say something like, oh, I'm, I'm in a winter phase right now, you know, like I'm in a hibernation time right now. I'm really just, I'm in this inward self-discovery period, or I'm just kind of being and just listening, you know, and just tuning in to the universe and my soul and myself. That can be really useful because otherwise it's like, you know, how are you doing? And you're like, oh, I'm not doing well, you know, and you start giving language to the fact that you don't have this and you don't have that and da, 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 da. And that's the, you know, so we're really taught to like, clear it, clear it out so you can fill it back up again, you know? <laughs> and so that's the one that we miss mm -hmm. is that winter phase. Yeah. And so, so you, a lot of the work that you do is around finding self-love and, and how to really dive into that, that part of yourself and, and love yourself fully. How, how do you teach that? How is that something that you can teach somebody else? Yeah, so I mean, I really teach it through what I call the ancient wisdom approach, which is the four phases of the moon cycle and the five Chinese elements and how they blend together inside of your body. So let's take that winter phase since we're on that topic right now. Um, we're looking at kidney, we're looking at bladder. So those are the organ systems. Then we're looking at the element is water, the season is winter. You know, what, what is it to nourish the, the water element inside of yourself? There might be a lot of tears, you know? It might be you need to go get in some water and change your element, you know? Um, it might be that there's a dietary thing going on that you need to start to address. So all those things, and then we look at um, kidneys being like where yin and yang essence are stored. So what's your balance? What's your relationship to the feminine within you, to the masculine within you? How are you at receptivity? Can you receive a compliment? Can you receive pampering? Can you receive something good? Or do you, is there a self-worth piece? I would say, 99.9% .9 of my clients, when I get right down into the root of it, it has to do with protection. Why is that block there? It's protecting me. Why is it protecting me? Because I don't think I'm worthy of anything else. I have to hold this. And I don't think that I can have what I truly desire. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I like to incorporate Alison Armstrong's work quite a bit into mine. And just her languaging is so great, you know. And one of the things she, she says is like, well, if I can have it all my way, like really have it all my way, not just like, oh, I think you might be available to give me this much, you know, 
No, if I could have it all my way, or if I could wave a magic wand, you know, this is what it would look like. Mm -hmm. And so there is something about like dreaming bigger and having a bigger vision for yourself, but also not getting attached to that because that's again, the duality of like, oh, this is what's good and anything else is bad. No, that's not it. It's um, I always liken it to surfing. You know, if you're if you're catching a wave and you want to stand up on that surfboard, you need to look about several, like four or five feet out in front of your surfboard so that you can land in the middle of the surfboard. If you look down at the middle of your surfboard, you are gonna fall and eat shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> same with yoga, right? When we're jumping through from a downward dog dog to our feet between our hands, we need to look out in front of where we want to land. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so there is something really important to um <clears throat> kind of I, I i don't love to work use the word manifest anymore i'm having no. a new relationship with that word because again that's like i'm manifesting this thing that i don't have you know so it's coming from this lack place but if you're if you're in a co-creation with the universe and you're like hey universe i this would feel pretty amazing over here, you know, but, but I understand that you have the bigger perspective and you see what is right for me and what is not right for me much more so than I do, then you can trust, right? Then it's coming back to trust because intimacy is based on trust, vulnerability, and presence. Mm -hmm. And it's not about trusting the other person. It's about trusting yourself. Again, I trust myself so much so that I can give my heart and soul away to this person. And if they walk away, I'm still going to be able to come home. For sure. It's the trust piece for me was, I mean, it's still, it's a daily practice for me. It's, it just is, (laughs) but, but yeah, getting to that place because then you don't need to control. Right. And that control piece is is where you lose your mojo, right? Because you're trying yes. to control things that you have no control over. And so then you you lose your shit, right? When somebody is doing something that you don't like, it's like, ah, right? Instead of being in a place where it's like, okay, trusting coming back to that space, being able to live from that space that everything is happening for me. I mean, you already said that, that you can flow through virtually anything you literally can flow through anything because you're in this space that it's like even though i can't see the big picture right now i know that what comes from this is going to serve me that in this moment it is serving me right and then you can you can weather anything you can come back as you said you can come back to you and be in this place where where you're okay even when things look like they're literally falling around falling apart around you that you can be like okay, well, I guess this is my next, you know, phase where I'm going to rebuild from this, right? I, it looks like hell right now, but I, I know that I'm going to come to this place where I am going to rebuild something that's even, that's going to serve me even more. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's that trust piece is, is that practice, I think. And when you can get to that place of trust, you can relax. That's when your adrenals are like, okay, everything's okay, right? Everything yeah. is okay. And then, and then you can yeah. rebuild and create that, that life that it, whatever it is. Right. And, and do that co-creation. I'm with you on the manifesting. It's yeah. I, <laughs> I, I the co-creation found, sounds so much sweeter. It feels so much sweeter and, and so much yeah. more aligned with, with what it is that you're actually doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, trust is, it's something that a lot of us haven't had the opportunity to cultivate or, get into a relationship with just because it's, again, it's not taught, it's not valued. It's, um, it, what is it? It's, it's a bit intangible, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So like, it's something that you discover inside of yourself and and a lot of times through it, adversity, you know, faith. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so that's why I love the ancient wisdom approach because you can trust it. It is for sure. It is nature's way. It is the way that is the Tao. And it is inside every breath you take. It is inside every rise and fall of your estrogen and progesterone levels. As you go through your menstrual cycle every month, it is inside of your body. It is really very much inside of your body. We look at the, um, the Shen, the Shen is the spirit. It's the, um, the, the, like the kind of soul essence and it lives in the heart you know and there's this very strong connection between the heart and the kidneys and the heart is fire and the kidneys are water and so we've got this yang and this yin and and their relationship and so again like what is your relation what is the 
like the inner beloved in in my body of work it's the union of the masculine and feminine within you because we need the masculine i mean we're we're not devaluing that it's just that we haven't valued the yin we haven't valued the feminine the rest the receptivity i mean really truly as any human being a woman or or a man or anything in between you know if you are adept at truly receiving then you should be able to just kind of <clears throat> sit <clears throat> sit on your throne and receive whatever it is that you want to come into your life and <clears throat> you can't receive the thing about receptivity is you can't receive what's coming to you tomorrow you can't receive what came yesterday it's a presence thing you have to be present in order to receive and you can use your senses sense of smell sense of touch sense of taste you can use them as doorways to the present moment like i'm receiving this flavor I'm receiving this sensation. I'm receiving this smell. And when you're in a regular routine practice of that all day long, like consciously receiving, then you start to open up this receptive vessel in your body, which is your yin meridian, most feminine and receptive of all of the meridians, which aligns to your chakras and your endocrine system because your glands are right there. Then, um, <clears throat> you know, you're opening yourself up to receive things that you didn't even know were coming to you. So I'm curious, I, going back just a little bit, I, I wanted to ask you earlier, how do you how do you tap into the glands? Because you said you want to see where the glands are at. That's, you know, one aspect of the work that you do. How do you do that? Do you do that through acupuncture? Do you do that through some other testing? Or, or how do you find out where the, the glands are at? That's a good question. I love to use Qigong. I mean, you can do you can do a million different things. You know, you can you can do testing for sure. Um, so sometimes I'll test people's, you know, where they're at in their in their endocrine levels, like their estrogen, progesterone, testosterone levels. Look at their cortisol levels. That's important. But I mean, energetically, uh, you can feel inside of your body if you're doing some Qigong movements. You can feel like, oh yeah, I feel some buzzing, some energy. I can uh, I can feel a little, but it's kind of, eh, and then oh, I'm getting down here. I don't I don't feel anything, mm -hmm. you know. And then it's down here, and I'm like, oh yeah. I little maybe something and you know a lot of a lot of the women who come into my work um have first second and heart blocks mm -hmm. not all but a lot a lot have a hard time being in their bodies on this planet at this time which i think a lot of people do a lot of people would rather not be here mm -hmm. right now and um and that's root chakra that's like being on the planet having some roots you know being in a body and um and then second chakra sexuality creativity uh you know finances as well so mm -hmm. we're looking at all of that and you know i can i cannot if someone's with me physically i can run my hand over them and feel myself um but and then sometimes i can just talk to someone and they can tell me everything that's going on and all the stories and da 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 da, da. and i'm like okay everything is pointing to the solar plexus mm -hmm. like you don't you haven't found your inner power yeah. so what supports the solar plexus second and first chakra so okay what we need to go you need to start at the at the base mm -hmm. i think um not so much always right where it's out but kind of like what supports it Mm -hmm. It's the same in um, five element acupuncture, uh, you know, what is the, what's the mother of this element, you know, and, and is it nourishing this element or is it, is this element being undernourished in your body? It's really vast, you know, it's just such an amazing, I'm getting really inspired. So five element acupuncture is a totally different style of acupuncture. And when I was in school, I've been in acupuncture for 15 years now, I realized last weekend. I'm like, damn, how, where does the time go? <laughs> um, so, you know, I was in school and I was like, I love five element acupuncture because it's all it's much more about the emotional, the spiritual, like you really learn the names of the points like window to the sky and abdomen sorrow, you know, just all these beautiful poetic names, very Taoist, very beautiful and um and i just did a, a little course over the weekend and i was like oh my god i just gotta go back toward that toward that style of acupuncture because it just makes so much more sense i mean not that traditional chinese medicine doesn't make sense i've had a lot of success with that too 
but just where I'm at in my life, doing a lot more online work with people and coaching and tantric work, Dakini sessions, helping people find that spark and that flame. Like, where is it living? You know, how can we access pleasure? How can we bring so much pleasure in? How can we nourish with the mother so that that child is supported? Mm -hmm. You know, inside of yourself. I'm not talking about family, but like, there's these pieces and these archetypes inside of yourself. And so they need to be nourished and supported so that they can thrive. Yeah, no. And it, it is, it's, I, I use that as well in, in the work that I do I not, not acupuncture, but definitely that, that five elements and yeah, it's, it's beautiful how it all weaves together and, and supports each other and connects to each other in all the different ways that it does. And yeah, no, it's, it's an incredible, it's an incredible system, right? That is just absolutely divinely perfect in and of itself. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you have some a taste of your work that you're going to share with us today. Can you explain quickly what it is that you're that we're going to be diving into here? Sure. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead, and I'll give you the foundation breath for all of the Taoist sexual practices. This is, um, you gotta get pretty proficient at this to do the orgasmic upward draw, to do ovarian breathing, to do the, the deer exercises, which perk up your breasts. If you've been breastfeeding mama, they're very good for that. So all these other practices are based on this breath and it is for the adrenals and it's for the kidneys and it's called turtle breathing. So each one of the sort of um, organ systems in Chinese medicine has a associated animal. And so for the kidneys, it's the turtle. And you look at the turtles, right, in the ocean, and they, they are these giant big creatures, and they live a very long time, and they move through the water, and they have this like ease and presence about them, like this wisdom about them. And so back in the day, the, the ancient Taoists, they were observing nature. They didn't have Instagram and all these distractions, right? So they just watched the turtles <laughs> and the deers and the cranes, and they have crane qigong and deer exercises, you know, all these animal things. And so the dragon, you know, and so we, we watched, they would watch the turtles and they'd be like, oh my God, look how long and slow a turtle breathes in and then how long and slow a turtle breathes out. And so this is called turtle breathing. And it's really great to do in child's pose. I love to do it in child's pose. So anytime I'm doing yoga or taking a class or teaching a class, I will take some serious time in, in child's pose to really get some good turtle breathing in because I also think it's a great place to set intention. And intention is, is very important for um, co-creating with the universe. So so if you can get in child's pose right now, if not, just sit where you are and, and bring your awareness to your lower back and just imagine that you have a turtle shell on your lower back, big, beautiful shell. And as you inhale, you're gonna push that shell toward the wall behind you. And then actually we wanna start on an exhale. So exhaling all the way down to the very bottom of the lungs, clearing all the stale air from the very bottom of the lungs, drawing the navel back toward the spine, squeezing, squeezing, squeezing every last little drop of air out. And then as you bring inspiration into your body, inhale, push that turtle shell toward the wall behind you. And as you exhale, just allow that shell to fall back toward your spine. All the way out, clearing to the very bottom of your breath. Even in your breath, you can see, oh wow, when I really clear to the very bottom, when I let go completely, there's so much more space for inspiration to flow in and it flows in easily and effortlessly and breathing in and pushing that shell toward the wall behind you. And as you exhale, just letting that shell fall back toward your spine. And on your next inhale, bring so much space, so much inspiration into your lower back. It's kind of like a reverse yogic breath. We're breathing into the back instead of the belly, bringing so much space into the lower back that the adrenal glands float right up off of the kidney organ. And as you exhale, let that shell fall back toward your spine. 
And next inhale, just imagine your adrenals are like sponges and they're all wrung out and dry. And as you breathe in, you're gonna soak in the chi, the energy from all around you, from your own breath, from the trees, from the water, from the plants all around you're soaking in this chi and filling up those adrenals juicing them up as you exhale just let your shell fall toward your spine clearing out all the stale air from the very bottom of the lungs and as you inhale this next inhale brings so much space into the lower back that you feel the outer cortex of the adrenal gland separate away from the inner medulla of the adrenal gland, like an egg white and an egg yolk separating away from each other. And as you fill up the lower back, now you've got these three structures. You've got the kidney organ, you've got the outer shell, and you've got the inner seed, the medulla, all floating, all kinds of space between them. And they're like, oh, just reveling in this spaciousness. Staying with your own breath rhythm, your own breath rate. Take a couple more breaths like this. And you can use some abdominal strength when you first start doing turtle breathing. You use your abs a bit. Over time, you don't need that anymore. Good, and then just exhaling your final breath out. Let's take one more and just ask your adrenals. What is it that they've been wanting to tell you? Listen to that message. And you can just allow that message to settle into your body, into your heart, connecting the fire and the water. just make a little vow to your this is your inner beloved can talk through your adrenals it can talk through your yoni it can talk through your heart just gave you a message so how are you going to honor that message today and so that's that's the kind of intro to the taoist work that was incredible. <laughs> my my adrenals were like rest, <laughs> <laughs> rest. I heard them. I heard them through the. <laughs> I think she said rest over there. <laughs> they were like please. <laughs> For the love of God. Yeah, yeah. No, that was incredible. I I've never done that before, and I will definitely incorporate that into my daily practice. Like that is just so delicious, so nourishing, so calming and centering. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a really a game changer. And if you do that every morning, like I like to do that before I get out of bed, actually. Mm-hmm. And then I'll do kind of like some undulations and some rolls and just kind of like let the whole body kind of eat up that message, you know, like, OK, this is what we're doing today. Yeah, no, that was beautiful. And so you mentioned in that that you can get messages from the Yoni as well. And that leads us to the free gift that you have for our audience. Can you tell us a bit about that? Is it the Sacred JJ series? It is. The, you said it's a 10, a 10 yeah. mini video. Okay, there you go. Okay, so <laughs> it's the Sacred JJ series, which is where you're going to get so much more in touch with your Yoni than you ever have before. So Yoni is a Sanskrit word. It means sacred space. And the Yoni is really comprised of not just the vulva, not just the vagina, and not just you know, the clitoris, but your the entire thing, including your ovaries, your fallopian tubes, your womb, your cervix. So your entire reproductive zone. So your whole pelvic bowl is really engaged in the yoni. And so there's a lot within that, right? There's a creative center, that's the womb. There's a, you know, a, um, the fallopian tubes, these pathways to the creative center, the ovaries, which are like where the juice lives. And so there's just a lot within there, within that. Plus, you're going to learn about some of the organ systems. Who thinks about the liver having to do with your sexuality or anything? But it has a lot to do with it. 
<laughs> so you'll get into a new relationship with your body through this 10 part um, video series. And I believe I created it quite a while ago, but I believe there is deer exercises in there. So, so there's going to be some breast loving in there as well. And um, it's just a really sweet little series. And that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. It has been such a treat having you here today. It like, honestly, I just, I could sit here and talk another three hours with you <laughs> without any issue at all. Um, but we are going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing all of this incredible wisdom, all of this brilliance that you have, this way of looking at at the body, at the sexuality, at getting your mojo back, how it all flows together. Again, we are one being so mm -hmm. just that that beautiful integrative way of, of looking at it and and sharing that with everyone today thank you so much mm, my pleasure thank you so much for having me alana it's lovely to sit with you and just to feel your energy and thank you for doing what you're doing it's it's a big project it's a big undertaking so make sure you get some good rest in between yes. <laughs> for sure. i heard i heard my adrenals uh, so make sure that you check out Dr. Willow's powerful work. You can check it out at our website, drwillowbrown.com. And don't miss this amazing free gift. Get to know your Yoni on a much more intimate level. As we're saying goodbye, do you have any thoughts that you'd like to leave our audience with, Dr. Willow? I would just say, you know, boy, it is not easy being a woman. It is not easy being a plant, a human on this planet at this time. And... Um, and be gentle with yourself as you resource yourself, as you continue to get to know. If you've never listened to your inner beloved before, that's okay. You just start now, you know, just start where you're at and be gentle with your process, be patient with yourself and really just give yourself a pat on the back for the, the moments of nourishment that you are able to find and start to align yourself with a, a more yin approach to life. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get all the to-dos done. You're still gonna do that, but you're gonna do it in a different way. And you're gonna have a lot more energy because of that. Um, and then also I do wanna say, I wanna just put it out there. We have a podcast that we just started called Sex Reimagined, Leah Piper and myself. And I believe you're gonna get to hear Leah on this summit as well. Mm -hmm. And so we're just, ongoing constantly kind of talking about everything between cervical orgasms and anal sex and and how to forgive your perpetrator you know so it really runs the gamut and uh we have so much fun on there so we would love to have you tune in with us as well <clears throat> especially after you have tuned in with alana's amazing summit because there's a lot of listening to do for these summits so do alana's summit first and then when you're like i need some more inspiration come on over to the sex reimagined podcast <laughs>